family. Welcome to the Reiki Healing Hope community. If you're new to the channel, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. But most importantly, to comment because I love what, to hear what's going on. And you know I answer all of your comments. So today we're going to do one of my favorite types of videos. And it is a wisdom learning video. So today we're going to do soul contracts explained so i'm gonna get my tea take a sip shout out to lavender chamomile <laughs> and just like any other session that we have we like to start this session out with a prayer it is not a religious prayer just a pr prayer to connect us in our individual healing journey as well as community to know that we are here for each other and that we are hoping the best for ourselves as well as hoping the best for others so do i have your permission to say a prayer okay may i take your hand Dear Mother, Father, God, and all of our highest good, please connect us to the Reiki Masters, the Ascended Masters, Master Jesus, Master Buddha, Master Katumi, the Archangel, Spirit Guide, Spirit Animals, our Ancestor, and our Lineage, all for our highest vibrational good only. Let us connect with our intuition, trusting within ourselves, believing within ourselves, and moving forward in our physical and spiritual path. Let us let go of the toxic path and embrace the fruitful future. And I say all of this in the name of I am. Ashe, ashe, ashe. Amen. <laughs> As you know with community that this is not necessarily something that is religious and there's nothing wrong with religion unless you feel some type of way about a certain faith. That That's fine. Everybody has their experience. Um, but regardless of religion, that is no excuse to not have a personal spiritual practice with God, the universe, source, whatever it is you want to call it, or just doing what you feel like you should be doing, kind acts towards other human beings if you don't want to have such a um, spiritual perspective. But let's go ahead and get into soul contracts. So I'm going to go ahead and set the mood. We have our Reiki infused candle. So if anything comes up that you want to let go, know that it's right there. And we also have this lovely, lovely, lovely smoky quartz just holding the space for us. Because we're going to be doing a lot of third eye wisdom. Now you all. I'm going to be getting a new candle soon. So you can go ahead and comment if there's a certain flavor you like. Because knowing me, I love everything that is spice. Pumpkin, apple, and I love everything that's um, peppermint. So I like pumpkin, apple, cinnamon, and things that are peppermint. Oh my god! Just relaxing today. We're not taking ourselves too serious today. I know that we can get into some really deep things. Today, we are just having a little chit-chat wanted to give you a couple of moments just to literally enjoy the moment enjoy yourselves enjoy life now to jump into the conversation what we're talking about today is soul contracts for those of you all who don't know what a soul contract is let me just give you the background now side note with this tea so every morning because I strongly believe in routine I make me a cup of tea and this morning I boiled the water I sat the cup out I went about you know cleaning up I like to do cleaning up in the morning and then I went back to get my tea because I'm like oh it's cooled off and I didn't pour the water in the cup so I'm sure that that is definitely a metaphor for life. I don't know what it is. You can comment a metaphor if you have one. But definitely jumping back into soul contracts. Let's have this conversation about soul contracts. So the background knowledge in soul contracts is looking at it from a metaphysical perspective. A soul contract is coming from the perspective that we as 
spirit energetic beings live hundreds if not thousands um, depending on what you believe maybe even millions of lifetimes and in each lifetime we're coming with karma and so karma is less of you know what goes around comes around and more of you live a certain lifestyle certain actions certain things you do in this life and what you do in this life deeply impacts how your next life will be even if you're like a really nice person even if you're a really mean person just the actions that you're taking in this lifetime and lifetimes before impact your next lifetime okay so a soul contract is um, the belief that as your spirit has already transitioned from its previous life it's in you know the universe the energy fields whatever dimension whatever it is you um uh, can wrap your head around when it decides to incarnate back into a body meaning the spirit decides that it wants to learn more so it goes into the physical body it has a soul contract where your spirit will briefly see you know the themes that you're going to go through this can be anything from uh, abuse um whether you are the victim or the victimizer uh, health concerns struggles even like the good you know positive things your soul sees this in this life being presented and it chooses okay this is this is the life that i need and i'm going to incarnate in it if it doesn't then it waits and it chooses another type of life so the reason why this comes up is because when we take responsibility for our lives even if we are not the people um, who broke us where we may have had traumatic experiences taking responsibility means going back to that soul contract and understanding from a macro view a higher self that we had an understanding of what kind of life we were going to have and it is all for our ultimate highest good now this is where it gets a little bit tricky and i give you all disclaimers all the time especially especially when it comes to people who have faced trauma and i definitely think people in this community not Ricky Healing Hope, but in the energetic community, we definitely have to walk on eggshells here because this can be wisdom that if you get it from your higher self, you can give it straight to yourself. But if you're giving it to other people, and this is, you know, a note to healers out there, try to put a little bit of finesse in it because we have to be very careful that we are not victim blaming. We're still having this physical experience. There are all of these um, intersectional things going on. So you can't look at someone who has had this horrible trauma to them and say to, to them, well, you agreed in this, so you know, take responsibility and move on. It's not that simple. What I'm saying is that from a huge macro view, the spirit goes into the physical body and the physical body takes longer to manifest than spirit. When your spirit, it's you're not tired. You don't go to you know you don't go to sleep. You don't have these things that the physical body needs. Like we need to eat, we need to drink, we need to rest, we need um, energetic balance, we need grounding, we need all of these things. The spiritual energy sees from a higher consciousness and is not weighed down by the physical body. But because of that, our physical body needs the correct um, environment and we need to have compassion towards it. So where this, the spirit looks down at the trauma and it sees, okay, you're going to, to be a light bringer to people who experience this. And a part of the path is going through it understanding everything that you experience getting to the other side finding your way out of the darkness piecing yourself back together letting go of any kind of hurt regret survivor's remorse anything like that and it's a process it's gonna be a process for the rest of your life when you get to that moment you can then turn around and teach other people how to get out
people who are really, really struggling because when you look back at your life, you see that you had teachers, you had people who helped to pull you out. And then you turn around, you know, you're that one person can help 10, hundreds, thousands, maybe even millions just by taking ownership and and showing how you can be in full control of your power and in your life. So the soul contract is basically telling us it, it really guides us in our purpose and in our path but it's like you really have to go through that dark night of the soul to be able to grapple with these concepts and so maybe it's not you know a brutal trauma maybe you were raised in a certain kind of um, household or upbringing and it just was very difficult maybe you have this kind of karma that surrounds you by certain people you might be very compassionate so you attract people who are not compassionate and you're giving way too much you're not asking for anything in return you're attracting people who want way too much who can't give you anything in return and you're like look i'm in this cycle i want to be a light bringer i want to give compassion but i don't want to do it like this because from a spiritual perspective sure Maybe perhaps you can give energy, but from this physical body that your spirit is in, you can't. You cannot be a martyr. You cannot give more energy than you have to give for yourself. You can't. Like I say all the time, you have to give to yourself first and let that overflow be what you give to others so you can give without the need of anything in return, without feeling like you're going without, without this feeling of lack, because you cannot for anybody who is doing healing you cannot be a healer and you are in a mental state of lack you cannot and let's take it further you cannot be a good romantic partner a good family member a good friend a good person at work if you are at a a mental state of lack you can't be you know the best personal trainer if you are not trained in your everyday life people are look. this is a physical example but people are looking at you as your canvas now when we get into the internal work um you can't really see that so people can definitely fake that um until they make that but even a romantic partnership you can't present yourself to the world as this great you know union of two people and then just be e- emotionally void towards each other to have no compassion and things like that so the soul contract lets you know you know in which space or which movement that you're going forward now you it's not just necessarily okay you see this theme boom you know connect to yourself da, 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 da. it's some other things too you have certain soul contracts with people too Um, It is the idea that people incarnate in groups. So, you know, the people that you are closest with in this lifetime who have somehow, you know, you all have done things together this entire lifetime, can be family, can be friends. You all may have had similar roles in each other's lives in other lifetimes, maybe in just different ways. And the way that you can Um, recognize this is is via dreaming so if you've ever noticed that you had a dream where you had people in this lifetime in that dream but it was a different time maybe different time period maybe not even a time period but it's just like wow this feels like in i don't want to get too out there but alternate reality another dimension another kind of like it feels kind of modern Um, but I have these people and you know, they're not them, but in your mind's eye, you're like, this is them. And having those moments, it's telling you how these people played out in your lives in different times. And, you know, them being modern, it, it can be like times from the past and you can just feel yourself at that time where you felt like it's modern. Like we're living in this time. I'm sure in a thousand years later, people of that time will look back and be like that. They were old and ancient you know, they're doing all these things backwards. But here now we feel that this is the modern time. So it can be the same kind of energy in your, your dreams. You know, it's, it's setting up the storyline so that you can, um, relate to it but you have those soul contracts now the reason why i'm talking about that with people is sometimes they are karmic um they have to do 
as I've been, this has been the theme for the past two weeks, loyalty. You have these kind of twisted energetic loyalties to people where you might have this toxic energy, this codependency between people and they can, they don't even have to be evil people. It's just like you all have this weird dependency, this weird need, and it's a part of your soul contract. And it doesn't mean you have to stick with it. It means that if you make the decision, you can break that soul contract. So there's two different kind of levels to soul contracts. There's that macro view of the soul contract of coming into this life and using any, you know, any experience as an opportunity to bring light and love. And then there's the the micro level view of these soul contracts that we've had over and over again with certain people, certain situations, and those we can break. Those we do not have to continue to go forward, but they're super scary. Even if you're in a toxic um, relationship, they're super scary because once you break those codependent tendencies, then you're literally out here on your own and you may lose your sense of self, who you thought you were. Because if you were the martyr who gives of yourself and does all of these things, to a detriment and you know people walk all over you or something like that that's kind of extreme i'm sure there's a little you know i'm sure it comes out in different ways in people's lives but if you are that and you cut yourself off from the source then what you thought you were you know what was me this is what's happening to me that's no longer your storyline. So everything that you don't have, you have to go give it to yourself. So you can't get the credit of being, you know, this really, really great person. You have to go out there and you have to do the work and going and doing the work in a different sphere means you're going to reach some challenges, some obstacles, some perseverance. You know, you might find yourself on the other end where it's like you, you might, want to be taking because you had to give so much so you want to take 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 but at the same time you're not you know you're not balancing anything now i want to say that last statement with a grain of salt because if you spent 10 years of 10 years of your life just you know giving 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 once you cut that off naturally you're you might be taking and you don't even realize it and that is kind of like um like a pendulum you know if it went this way it's going to swing back that way into the middle but that's things that happen in an unconscious way consciously you can make that choice though it will be extremely hard that if you're in a situation where you're you know giving 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 you're like look i gotta cut this off and i gotta you know be able to give to myself you might naturally be put in these opportunities where people just want to give to you, give to you, give to you. You know, you can take, you know, and learn how to receive, but don't, you know, unconsciously start to rely on them. Oh, this feels good when people give this to me. Still rely on yourself. The universe will still send those people and still ener- send that energy as it, you know, swings, you know, the other way. But taking accountability for okay i'm responsible for how i make me feel and i appreciate others giving to me but i'm responsible for this on the exact reverse too where you've been a taker 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 then you're like you know what i I really want to to start being open start being vulnerable and then people may be you know taking from you and you can give to a certain extent but then you got to put those boundaries up and of course life is multi-dynamic you might be that way in, in relationships but you may be the exact opposite in work so you're having these multi things swinging at the same time so the big takeaway is if you go into your meditation practice and i really recommend you doing this for 30 days though you can literally do this in one session the reason why i think you should do this for 30 days is because you want to make sure that that is really you know what it is that you need to hear you go into your meditation practice you do your breathing which is pranayama Um, you do your meditation, you do your relaxation in complete quiet. I like to use earplugs and go into yourself, into your soul, into your heart and start asking these questions. Can I see my soul contract? Can we look over my entire life? Not from a way of trauma that you're feeling it, but from like the bird's eye view. Can we look over my entire life? So I understand what I'm supposed to be doing. What am I supposed to be doing from the big picture? 
and everything starts to be explained. Now, go down deeper to the, the micro view of, okay, can you explain this soul contract I have with this person? Okay, what is the purpose of this? And the purpose is always something higher vibrationally. You know, a soul contract, like I'll, I'll give an example for my own life. My mother, my soul contract and my sibling's soul contract with our mother has to do with unconditional love being able to give unconditional love. When we were born, she had such a hard life that she just wanted someone to love her. And you hear that, you've heard that. It's not the first time you've heard um, someone saying that they wanted to have kids for someone to love them. But on the reverse, is she didn't know how to love. She didn't know how to receive. She didn't know how to give. She loved us, but she didn't know how to do it in a compassionate way. So it required us to come into this lifetime giving her compassion that she didn't have at the same time. That's an energetic imbalance. So here it is. We become overgivers. We start to put ourselves in a situation where we are attracting people where we have to give them compassion, but they can't give to us because that's what we're used to. That's what our energy, you know, came into this life having. But a part of us, myself included, um, saw that coming in. The soul is wise and knows, okay, I can give that. But that enlightenment or that awakening or that opening where you understand like, oh, okay, I forgot why I came into this life. But now I remember years later, I look at my mom. I look at her when I was younger, just a hot mess <laughs> to look at her now, you know, a person full of wisdom, a person who is an excellent mother as I'm an adult. You know, I could have not imagined as a child that she would become this, but it's a part of the compassion that we gave her that allowed her soul to grow. And now she can see things differently. She looks back and she is super regretful of how she did things, but that within itself gives us the validation that we needed. Like, okay, we went through this and that all is a healing within itself to go through that and have trauma with someone that you love so dearly. And to be able to come out on the other side is a miraculous healing. It, I don't want to say it makes all of it worth it, but you see the silver lining of what's happening. Now the soul contract there is that, you know, I had to many of times be very stern with her and let her know, okay, this is how you hurt me. This is what you did. And, you know, she made excuses, but at the same time, she showed a huge amount of courage by coming back each day. We would have these hard conversations. And then the next day she would, you know, talk to me and check in on me or something like that. And this is for years, 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 these things going on. So you see how like the pendulum swung back and we're having these very physical experiences from the energetic perspective or from the soul's perspective. I could have just said to my mom like, oh, you know, she had a hard life and I'm just going to keep on being super nice without calling her out. But then that's actually enabling because we're having this physical experience. We need to be able to take accountability for the emotional Im uh, balance happening in this physical spiritual level is she's a wonderful person. You know, it's not it's not her fault that these things had to happen. But on a physical level, you got to hold a person accountable. And I can say the exact opposite for my father, who, you know, he just can't, you know, he's really wise guy, but he, he, he's so disconnected from the physical. He wants to stay in the spiritual so much that we can't even have like a, a parent child conversation because it, it feels like he feels like he's being attacked as opposed to, you know, in this life, you, you, a part of your soul contract was to be a parent. So you have to breathe in that and understand that you have to go through that, that journey, you know, of being a parent and you can be spiritual as well. And it's juggling both. So, you know, when I look at him, I, I feel like if he, if he knew better, he would have given it. And honestly, I had to get to the point where I had to really open up my compassion for him. Like, wow, this guy gave me the best that he had to give, you know, looking at, you know, his mother is wonderful. If you look at the, um, if you look in the description box, I call her my shero. She's the person who has like, was instrumental in my life. She was so nice. So sweet. He was, <laughs> he was 
very like into my dad is very into himself and very like you know the world revolves around me but at the end of the day it's it shows insecurity and that's something he got from his father his father was someone who was very like absent in his life and it's like he was chasing his dad and you know I look back on my life and I'm like wow I was chasing my dad like always trying to bridge the gap between us two you know when that's not my role in the moment that I cut that off and I'm like you know what this guy literally gave me the best he could and I'm not going to continue that pattern the moment that that got cut off I started feeling better in my life and I had to make a conscious decision that, you know, in my heart, the door will always be open in a physical experience. The doors will always be open when he's ready, but we can't, you don't get to have the privilege to be in my life if you um, can't hold yourself responsible, you know, and then I had to make those same decisions and friendships people that I loved so dearly, you know, 15, 16, 17 years, you know, and from an inner, from a spiritual perspective, they're nice people. They're not, they're not bad people, but treating me bad because I'm going through, I'm attracting this, I'm consenting, I'm in these soul contracts, cutting it off and creating boundaries. Like, Hey, my heart is always there, you know, for them because I know that they're lovely people, but in a physical experience, you cannot be in my space. If you do not treat me with the amount of respect that not only I deserve, but I'm giving to you as I had to cut those people off. Boop, 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 boop. But for an example, on the other side, my mom who, you know, It was traumatic being uh, raised by her. She's one of these people who are so into my life because what I appreciate the most is her growth. It wasn't what she did in the past, but it's just her growth. I think it's hard to explain how proud I am of her. And it's less about needing to be perfect. It's more of like just as a parent the healing that came from she, when she chose to heal herself. And so I say all of that to say, I know I, I can get really out there, but to those who are struggling with any kind of parent, family, friendship kind of dynamics, these were the things that rooted and anchored me down. And when I had to make a drastic change in my life, I literally felt like I lost myself. You know, like these the role that I had played in so many people's lives. Now I have to play it in my own life. And I didn't value myself enough all those years to do it. Now I have to do it for myself. I can't get the credit anymore for doing it in other people's life. It was a journey, but it was a beautiful journey because it led me into healing. It led me into um, owning my healing um, and to be able to be here in community with you all today. You know, I love you all dearly. We all are here because we're in our healing journey myself included and for those healers out there it is okay you can be in your healing journey and the wisdom that you get in that practice so would you come to share in community you don't have to be a healer to to give others healing or to be able to share that wisdom but i'm gonna close it up today i'm so appreciative of you all um and today was soul contracts explained if you if you want to go into it a little bit more if you have some questions put it in the comment sections i only ask that if you comment you comment for the highest vibrational good so that we can keep this a safe community um join us on ig so we can get some more like behind the scenes stuff but until next time if no one has said it to you i'm going to go ahead and say it to you i love you i'm so proud of you connect with yourself see that macro soul contract but also make that micro decision to let certain things go but until next time